Positive Theory on Gravity. And um, he sees itself is quantum mechanical, so if you ask how does nature store information, it has to do it in Q.
the velocity should go down as a function of the distance. And if you look at the planets, that is exactly what uh, happens. Now, uh, all of these planets behave very, very well, nicely according to Newton's law, except the, 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 the most inner one has a bit of a problem. Uh, normally, planets would go around like this in an ellipse uh, orbit where they have a near point, which you call the perihelion, and then there's the furthest point, but the perihelion should always be at the same location. And for Mercury, that doesn't happen. This is an exaggeration. There's every time that it goes around, it has a slight uh, rotation, and in, in a century, it's a lot like uh, 43 arc seconds, I think that is. So this is uh, a very tiny deviation, but it's a deviation from the laws of Newton, and you might try and explain it by invoking or postulating that there is some other planet uh, closer to the sun, sun, and that might actually cause this deviation to happen. And this is what been, people look for, but that's not the explanation. It's uh, not that we can save Newton's law here. Uh, this is an effect due to uh, general relativity. So Einstein indeed uh, could explain what happens to Mercury, and he could explain many more things, in particular also how light behaves in the presence of gravity. So according to his theory, gravity is the result of curvature of space and time, and so objects no longer go in straight uh, lines, they go around in these elliptical orbits, and maybe small deviations from it, that are due to the fact that indeed Einstein's equations are not exactly the same as Newton's equations, he wrote down an equation that tells us that in most circumstances Newton tells us very well what's going on, but in other circumstances when gravity gets very strong, we need Einstein's equations and also to explain or understand what light does in, in, uh, as a you know, as due to gravity. In particular, light can bend. And in this picture we see that light generally we think about as going in straight lines, but when there's a heavy object, then the light of an object that's behind the, the, the mass here can bend around and we can see it, but we then see it at another location because we would think that the light that is coming to us actually is coming from this star. So you see actually a dislocation or, or a displacement of the location of stars. And this is called uh, gravit well, bending of light, or you can have a certain effect we call uh, gravitational lensing, uh, which is a uh, sort of the same idea that namely light bends around and can come to us, but it can bend around if there's a heavy object in the middle in more than one way. Actually, it can bend this way or that way and even go above or below. And this is an example which indeed has really been observed where there's a galaxy far away and there's a big mass in front of it and then the light gets towards us in, in uh, more possible ways. Actually, it forms a ring. And that's called the Einstein ring. And this is proof that light is being bent by gravity and can be explained by Einstein's theory. So Einstein has explained Mercury. He can explain bending of light. Uh, of course, there are many more tests of Einstein's gravity, in particular a very spectacular one which you heard about, uh, which got the Nobel Prize uh, last year, is uh, the detection of gravitational waves. So where you uh, can observe that space-time, according to predictions of Einstein, has uh, ripples that are sent out when two black holes are colliding or merging together. In the last moment, they spiral so violently that the space-time itself gets distorted, and these ripples, they travel towards us with the speed of light and can be detected in this interferometer. Uh, this is one of the LIGO ones, and they were in two locations, uh, well, about 1,500 kilometers apart, or it may be more even, where both sig uh, found the same signal at the same time. So this is what happens. I think you can hear it. Can I know the sound? No. All right, there is a sound of this that allows you to hear what is going on. It's actually a, a ringtone that uh, you can buy, which is indeed the detection of these waves. Um, so this is indeed Einstein's equation, and uh, here are the ways that has been tested, uh, and, and in many more circumstances of so gravity waves. There was already direct, indirect evidence of gravity waves from 
uh, binary pulsars, bending of light, and what happens with Mercury, and many other ways. So you might say, well, this theory works, and it seems to work in many circumstances, but doesn't work in all circumstances. I'm going to actually tell you something about larger scales. And here, uh, you might say, well, it should work as well, because we don't know anything else. Einstein's theory must be right, so we're going to look what it does. But does it really look the same? So when you look at galaxies, they look in a certain way like um, a solar system in the sense that most of the mass is in the center. If we look at the stars, uh, there are many more in the center. And you can think about all these stars as going around in sort of circular orbits where you can look at each of those slices and ask what is the velocity. You can measure this by, by redshifts. And then you see as a function of the distance, you would have expected from the same way that planets behave, namely that at large distance the velocities go down, that it would do something like this. But this is what's being observed. Now, you can have true conclusions. Either you say gravity works in a different way, or if you assume that Newton's law should work, there must be something, well, explaining this difference. Well, what's happening here is that the stars are moving much too fast and they would, well, fly out of orbit if you rotate too fast with, with not enough force. And so there must be additional force putting it, pulling it together, otherwise we cannot explain why these stars would go so fast. And so there must be additional gravity. Um, so this is another picture of it. So this is uh, what's called a rotation curve. So this is the, the, the velocity and this is, again, the distance. And this is what you would expect and this is what we observe. actually. In most of these galaxies, the following thing happens. Instead of going down, the velocity stays constant. It's called flattening of the rotation curve. And uh, there's a big difference between what is expected and what's being observed. And there must be more uh, mass, actually, if you want to explain this. So this is indeed different from this equation. Actually, you can determine what should be the additional mass by looking at the velocity and using this equation. And this is what led to the idea of dark matter. Uh, it's a hypothesis. It's very much like what a planet that was assumed to be there. Namely, it fixes uh, Einstein's theory because we say there must be more mass and we would look for it. And there must be some particle that is forming a, a cloud, a sort of a halo it's called, around the galaxy where the gravitational force which is needed to, put to keep the galaxy together is, uh, require, is obtained from the additional mass that's in these particles. These particles cannot be seen. Here they're blue, but that's just an artist's way of showing it. But the, the, the particles have no uh, interaction with light. They should be only uh, gravitational, uh, have only gravitational forces. Well, people look for it uh, in accelerators. They look for it in uh, the detectors under the ground. And so far, nothing has been found. And so you might wonder, is this the way indeed we have to fix Einstein's theory, or is there another explanation? As I will explain, there are more things we don't fully understand in cosmology. There's also something called dark energy. I will return to that later. So there will be uh, questions that we need to pose and need to answer also, uh, well, at large scales, that might actually uh, tell us that something else is going on than what Einstein uh, might have written down. But for me, the main uh, motivation, actually, the main indication that Einstein's theory might work differently comes not from these observations, but also from theoretical uh, of, uh, well, developments. I mean, indeed, the work uh, of Hawking, which is the one I already well, became interested in, his work was uh, on black holes in particular and on the on cosmology. But black holes is one of those topics that we theorists use a lot to learn more about gravity. So what are black holes? These are um, predicted also by Einstein's theory. This is where uh, mass is put together by s in such large quantities and so close together that light cannot even escape. I mean, gravity becomes so strong that uh, from a black hole there is no escape when you go too close to it. There is namely some um, imaginary sphere around it. We call this the horizon that if you go inside that sphere, then you, well, you have to go faster than light to escape. And since nothing can go faster, you cannot get out. And light cannot even get out. And this is why the name was given black holes. 
Um, so we know that mass goes in, so we know the mass of a black hole, uh, black holes can rotate, but otherwise we have no information of what's inside the black hole. So everything we throw in disappears from our view, and so black holes are really objects that we can only study from the outside and wonder what went uh, in. So this is uh, what it looks like in terms of the space-time. So a star like the sun would have a, a curvature of space that looks like this. It sort of makes it dense. You can think about this as a lot of a rubber sheet where you put a ball inside and then it sort of bends through over and so it has some dent in it. And, th and the more mass, the more you concentrate it, the deeper it goes. And in a black hole, there's a sort of a funnel. funnel there's a, a hole coming in that goes all the way to the bottom or at least it goes so deep, indeed, that you hit this imaginary sphere where is the horizon. So every, all the matter goes behind that horizon. So this is how we should think uh, about black holes, is namely that all the matter has sort of disappeared and only what's left behind, what we can see, is the space-time, the curved space-time of the black hole itself. So what would it be if we would be in the neighborhood of a black hole uh, here? Uh, is the Earth, and this would be a black hole, and this is sort of what you would see. It sort of lo looks like uh, the Earth is being distorted. That's not actually happening. This is the light that we see, namely the Earth is just rotating around uh, the black hole, but the light is coming towards us from all directions you, in the way that this gravitational lensing works, and so we see the Earth sort of going in this circle. But it, of course, it's just rotating that way. I can also show you how, what it looks like when we fall into a black hole. And then I want to remind you of this uh, bending of light. So what I'm going to do it, uh, later is show you a little clip of how we move inside uh, the, in the neighborhood of a black hole. The horizon is this red line. We're going to look at the black hole, which is here in the center. And we're going to look at the light coming towards us. So the light here is some background, which is uh, the galaxy. Uh, but this is, is going to move. We're also going to watch and uh, what happens with the clock. Because black holes have another special property that not only light cannot come out, also time uh, goes, behaves very differently. So Einstein's theory does not only change space and curves, it also the time goes very differently in the sense that actually clocks start looking, uh, are going slower when you go close to uh, the horizon, actually it really stops even when you're on the horizon. And so we're going to watch this when we look at the movie. So here's the, the same picture again. So we start out uh, from this distance and now we're going to fall. And the green region is where we can travel safely. You go around in, in these closed orbits. Uh, when you would go closer, here you would need a, a rocket to uh, get a, well, stay safe. But when you get to orange, there's no way to get out because then you will fall into the black hole, which is uh, where you have entered the black hole. So here we're getting closer. We see also the horizon eventually that will be uh, indicated with the red lines. The north and the south pole are a little distorted because of the bending of light. Here we see indeed the light. There's one distance where light itself can even go in a circle around it. So light would e even be captured by a black hole. And here we indeed see the clock going slower. And at some moment we cross the horizon and then we see indeed the last sort of light coming from outside. And nothing is shown what's coming from inside because basically we don't know. So eventually we hit the singularity, that's what's in the center. So the center of a black hole is where curvature is, is so strong that uh, we really don't know, uh, well, what happens there because even Einstein's theory breaks down. But most of the interest actually of theorists is on the horizon. And so that horizon, I can actually show you this clip once more. Most people want to see it twice. So uh, this is the same picture again. And uh, as I said, I mean, there is a, a singularity inside, but the horizon itself is a very interesting place because of the way that the time indeed seems to stop from the outside but when you fall in yourself, you actually don't know that you're crossing a horizon. Uh, I mean, the space actually looks pretty normal. Uh, yeah, you get strong gravity, but it's not like there is something really uh, infinite or something. No, there's a really uh, normal space, so you could fall in. The only thing that goes wrong with you is when you hit the singularity, 
for when the gravitational field becomes really strong that it pulls you apart. But uh, the horizon itself can be analyzed in a very similar way as we analyze other parts of space-time. And this is indeed what, what Beckenstein and Hawking did. This is a, a more a precise picture indeed of this space-time around the black hole. So a black hole uh, has the property that there is one distance which we call the horizon. Here we draw the space actually as if, as if it's two-dimensional. So the horizon normally is a sphere, but here it looks like a circle. And when you would emit light, it would normally go in all directions. But in this case, when you're on the horizon, all the light actually goes inward. And this is how you would indeed fall in if you cross it. Now, Beckenstein and Hawking were worried about the laws of thermodynamics, and in particular what happens with the entropy of objects that you throw into a black hole. Uh, namely, this entropy is disappearing from our view. It represents a certain amount of information. I told you this. And what happens to that information? Well, if we throw it into the black hole, it disappears from our view. And so you might say, well, this entropy disappeared. Indeed, you can do thought experiments that allow you to actually generate work by throwing in this matter uh, with all the entropy in it. And then you would even have a way of, of generating work and actually violate the laws of thermodynamics because the entropy would not go up. I mean, it would actually go down. And so the only way to save this was to associate a certain amount of entropy also to a black hole. Now, this was the idea of Beckenstein, and Hawking then came along, and, well, he first didn't believe it because if you have an object that has a mass, which is also an energy, equals mc squared, and it has an entropy, then it also should have a temperature. 